Hello everyone, it's Thomas GGB, and Kamen Rider Revice is the newest Kamen Rider to appear in the franchise. Or rather, the newest Riders that just made their big stamp debut this last weekend with their premiere episode, and today, I'm going to talk all about it. Before I start, be sure to leave a comment telling me what you thought of Revi and Vice's first episode. There's a lot that happened, and I'd love to hear what others thought about it. I personally really enjoyed this episode. Going into it, I didn't really know what to expect, or rather I didn't have any expectations because I haven't really been as hyped for this season as I have been with other Toku premieres, and I'm not really sure why. Part of it has to do with the aesthetics of the show. Now, the base form Revi and Vice I think look excellent. Revi's colors are a little strange, but they aren't a deal breaker, they work together. But what really shines through for me is the Tyrannosaurus styling creating this big evil grin. It's so distinct for a rider suit. To me, Vice is far superior. I just think the black and pink colors flow extremely well together, and I think it's really cute that it's just his civilian form with some extra armor and this little dino hat. But everything else with the aesthetics is kind of meh. The stamps have cool jingles, but I'm not really loving their usage with the bell, and I'm really tired of random animal gimmicks. I kind of like the forms being straight copy and pastes of older riders, but the animal associations are so strange, again, animals again, and then for an anniversary season it feels weird that we're just kind of randomly shoving these two random things together, and then the vice forms don't really look good with different colors, and I mean yes, it is just how the show looks, so it shouldn't affect my enjoyment of it really, but it was kind of, I haven't really been looking forward to seeing the suits in action. But then episode 1 happened, it washed away any worries I had pretty quickly with this absolutely beautiful animation with all the primary riders in the 50th anniversary logo before switching to show Common Rider, Revi, Vice, and then Revice. One thing I wasn't expecting to like that much were the Deadmans, but like their introduction is them in a weird rave dungeon with cool music in the background, so what's not to like? There's not really much to their personality right now beyond a more or less generic goal of reviving Aguilera's fiance, which is a big rock named GIF, which is weird, but whatever she's into, that's fine. <laughs> what really won me over is the trio's Dia de los Muertos getup since GIF was found in South America, and it's just a really fresh set of clothes. I kind of prefer it over their monster forms, and instead I wish we got to see those monster forms a bit later. That attack felt really odd, because it's established they just raided another base in our public knowledge after stealing stamps, but now they attack Fenix again to just hijack a team. TV network for 30 seconds, and then the monster forms are super shoved in because the boys are in monster form just to make one shoot attack each, and then that's it. Then they transform back and everyone leaves. And their catchphrase is Gracias Deadmans. So like thank you, Deadmans? Are they thanking themselves? Or are they just like saying thank you and then just randomly saying their name as an organization? I guess it's that second one. I think if they were at least going after the Rex stamp here to finish out their collection, it would have flowed together better, but I guess, I mean, it didn't really take away from anything, it gave us our villain introduction. Regarding their appearance in the beginning though, I do have to wonder how all these people got into the rave dungeon, since the location is super weird. Are they aware that the dead mans are bad guys, since they see the monsters being made from them, and then those monsters proceed to attack Fenix later? But I guess in the beginning they're all happy about seeing the monsters, so I guess they're evil too? I need answers, Toei. Please deliver. I'm just kidding. I don't really care. The monster creation is actually probably my favorite part about the dead mans though. There's something really interesting to me about how they are summoned from the stamps, but the stamps aren't absorbed into the monster. So even though the mammoth monster was beaten in this episode, the dead mans still have the stamp and could theoretically recreate it. Which Saber did too, but the difference is the mammoth stamp isn't a villain gimmick, it's a hero gimmick and we know it'll create a rider form. So to get this 
stamp, eventually Revice will have to steal it instead of defeating its host monster, I guess, which I'm really interested to see play out with Mammoth and the other stamps. We even get a Rex monster thanks to that gimmick, and I really like that touch. It's cool to get a monster based off of the base form, especially with how it played into the whole creation of the rider. It added this real consequence to Fennec dude just trying to take the spotlight, and I've never really seen something like that happen before. Then it gave Daiji this really interesting internal conflict where he's meant to use the belt, but he literally just saw its usage go horribly wrong, setting the stage for our main character to become the main character. Speaking of the main characters, Iki and Vice are an amazing pairing in this first episode for a lot of reasons. First off, I love that the deal with the devil idea that's been hyped up was used really well. Iki only teams up with Vice as a last resort to save his family, but there's immediately a consequence with Vice's devilish nature causing him to go after the mom and eat her, and that's the very person Iki was trying to protect in the first place by forming the contract. So he becomes Revice as a sort of evolution of trying to save his family, as he now has to take control of his own devil. I think that makes this relationship really interesting since Vice is kind of a bad guy and Revi has to keep him in check. In a way, it mirrors how the first Kamen Rider and kind of the franchise overall was about a man turning an evil weapon into a force for good. Here, a man has to take an evil entity and control it into a heroic partner. Just the fact this show is called Kamen Rider Revice, but there isn't a character named Revice and it's referring to the idea of a man controlling his demon as two Kamen Riders that make up Revice is awesome. I wish it was more present in the fight scene, but hopefully it'll come back. At least it's really cool in the civilian moments where only Iki can see Vice and everyone just thinks he's insane as he's talking. I mean, he's basically talking to himself. We don't know what Vice is exactly other than his internal demon. Speaking of the fight scene, it was cool. I mean, it's a Kamen Rider fight scene. Why wouldn't it be cool? It starts off with the theme song, which I personally really like with the instrumental. I don't think the lyrics are that good, but I think the background track is really, really good. My favorite part was how Revi was doing all these kicks, like a classic Kamen Rider, but it was established earlier that he was a soccer player, so there's this through line. Instead of kicking a ball, he's kicking people through walls, and it also creates creates the staple of Kamen Rider Episode 1's, the weird CG, which was revised calf day legs, I guess. The last shot of the fight is pretty good, though. I don't know why Vice is aware he's in a show. It's a little weird, but at least Revi questions it too, so it's kind of just another addition to this wild demon and normal human combination. At the end of the fight, I think it was super unique that, as a normal human, Iki straight up gives the driver back. It was a nice twist that I hope has interesting repercussions, and if it his character because of that setup with the family. Since Iki's entire motivation for becoming a writer revolved around his family, to me they already feel pretty important for the story. I personally enjoyed the relationship with the YouTuber dad absolutely obsessed with his wife. While she's a bit more in charge but she still supports her husband's crazy antics, I thought that was cute. Between the brother being the intended revice and the sister's karate, I hope they'll join Iki as writer because thanks to Majin Rain I really like tokusatsu families, and one of the things I'm looking forward to the most with Revice is seeing this family together, whether or not they all become common writers. But what I'm looking forward to the most, and what I also enjoyed the most in this episode, is George. He has the last name, I just don't remember it, and I think it's more interesting to just call him George. For starters, Curious George. That's what he's Curious George. For starters, going into the episode, we know that he is a huge common writer fan in universe, so it kind of makes him really relatable off the bat and it's a neat addition for the anniversary show. Additionally, we know that he made all the revice gear and presumably this really cool jet base. And that's why they all look like older base forms, but it also means we can assume revice is his original character. <laughs> but exclusively to this episode, he's still awesome. Being the first character to speak and introducing the driver with a little pizzazz. Then at the conference, he just casually steals the mic from Fennec's dude and then when it gets taken back, he just has 
has no reaction. I love how casually he tells Fennec's dude, yo, if you try to transform, you're gonna summon a monster. And then when the monster <laughs> gets summoned, he makes no reaction. He's just like, I mean, yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. I told you so. And during the whole fight, he's not really that worried at all. Almost like he's aware this is like a common rider origin story. It's somebody's gonna become the rider. He'll be just fine. He knows what's happening. Then you can see this evolve when he's doing <laughs> the Ichigo pose and the face he makes when he does it is absolutely great. And then the face when he's showing the stamping pose to Iki to summon the gun. And then his random bits of English. Hey, 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 hey. What? 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 I hope George becomes a writer so that we can say it's his self-insert character. Overall, I'd say this was a solid premiere for Kamen Rider Revice. Just due to the nature of how Kamen Rider Revice is really two characters, there were a lot of unique aspects to this introduction that I enjoyed, and I'm definitely ready for more, and I'm excited to see George take his new friends on a Kamen Rider lesson adventure thingy. If you want to see more Kamen Rider lesson adventure thingies like this one, consider becoming a patron. For just $2, you get early access to all of my videos alongside extended audio editions as soon as I'm done recording them, or you could just subscribe and stay tuned for all of my upcoming tokusatsu videos. I hope to see you next time of Ichigo Pose.